Yeah, so I'm Pastor Joe Garber from, like they said, Southern Lancaster County at Byerly Mennonite Church. We've been there, my wife and I, for about 18 years, going on almost 19, and Mike Perry's with me this morning. And so uh, Mike's representing the mission evangelism team that we have at the church, and just a little bit of background. This food bank thing's only like three months old for us, so we don't have a whole lot of history here in regards to this, but the church has been involved in uh, various forms of mission and evangelism throughout the last couple of years and since I've been there. And, lo and, lo and locally, um, we initially had a vision for Lancaster City, so we did like street uh, park ministry at Farnham Park behind the Water Street uh, Mission there like once a month and would set up a microphone and do like preaching and handing out food and clothing and and playing games to children and face painting and things like that. So that was pretty much driven by the evangelism team. And at some point, the evangelism team got a vision like, what, what can we do locally? Because like we all live locally in the River Road area and, and uh, south of New Danville kind of place. And what can we do locally? And so that was really like on their heart. And right at that same moment of time, the Conestoga Area Food Bank, which I always knew it existed, but I thought, well, who uses a food bank out in the middle of the country? And and so right at that time, the food bank was like looking for participation um, staff-wise so that they could uh, increase the effectiveness of their ministry because they were getting overloaded with uh, abundance of homes that they had to serve. So this couple was with it like for over 20 years uh, administrating this thing and it grown from like several families to like 34 families and they do a, a home delivery type food bank. People don't come to the food bank, it's a home delivery food bank. And the team got a hold of this idea and they thought, how perfect, you know, that we get into people's homes, you know, like we were having trouble knowing how to sustain relationships on the street, like how do you really do discipleship when you meet people once a month on the street, that kind of ministry, which was great, you know, like hot shot hits kind of thing, but like how can we do something where we can actually develop relationships with people. So here we have open doors into people's homes. Uh, we bring the food to them, they open up the door and say, yeah, come on in, and often it's like, set the food here, let's talk, you know, and in the past, uh, the, the food was being brought to homes, but, but it was hard to know what to do more than that, because they had so many homes to go to, and uh, why don't you say a little bit about your experience in delivering food, just over here. Um, yeah, so, like Joe said, there's like 32 or 34 families. Uh, that get food at this food bank and it's a home delivery. So there's basically two groups going out doing all 34 deliveries and before we got there. So now we had three groups going out. He said, well, yeah, we really like you guys to come in because we feel like you have a spiritual, you can bring a spiritual aspect to the delivery, not just a physical aspect. And um, like Joseph said before, uh, Grace wrote in her diary, I think that he thinks I'm more spiritual than I am. Well, I think kind of the opposite. I think that you are more spiritual than you think you are, each and every person in this room. You know, by this gentleman saying that to me, that just tells me he was open to the spirit to hear that, that he needed help. So... He didn't realize how spiritual he actually was in listening to the Spirit, and each and every one of us has to be attentive to that. So, um, yeah, we go to these people's homes, and, you know, like Joe said, they're inviting you in. The door's already open. You know, they've already welcomed you in. You know, Jesus said, go, go into the cities and enter where you're welcome. Let your peace fall in that place where you're not welcome. Stomp the dust off your feet and move on. Well, you're welcome already into these places. So, you know, these people not just don't need a just a physical need, but they need that spiritual need. You can see it on their faces. They're like, you know, give me something more. So you have an opportunity to pray with them. You have an opportunity to talk to them and see what's going on in their life. You know, what they're struggling with, what they're dealing with, and just, you know, pray through that. And then, you know, intercede for those people you know, in your day in and day out, you know, it's not just a once a week, at least on our side of things, you know, it's like, you know, God brings those people to your heart, maybe you're going to work or whatever, you know, that's the time to sit down and pray for those people, like, okay, something's going on with this person today, they're going to need, you know, extra spiritual warfare, and you can provide that for that person.
Part, I've only been a Christian now for um, six years, and when I first started, I was scared. You know, I didn't want to go to the deep place, but God's taken me in the position where, you know, I had at, at work, I had a group of two other Christians, one of them who brought me to Christ, and within like a few months after that, my supervisor switched me to a different crew. You know, it was like God was pulling me out to a deeper place always. I'm like, no, I don't want to go, you know. But you have to go to that place. That's where you get your growth. You know, that's where the need is. That's where the fish are, the people are. You know, it's, it's not inside our church, although it can be. It's out there. It, you know, it's on the street. It's with these people who have that spiritual need and that hunger. And that's what I've really seen of late. You know, more people are getting hungry for the Word of God. And not just the word, but, you know, the spiritual aspect. They, they need to feel something. You know, they, they have a desire to be fulfilled. And only Christ can bring that. And you can bring it, you know, being obedient to his spirit. Turkeys were handed out before Christmas, I think it was. And this one trailer that was the turkeys were taken to, they said, can you come back and pray through our trailer? And these were two uh, girls that were twins and their cousin and, and they were just living there. They were like in their 20s. Their dad had died and long story of brokenness in that home, violence and drugs. And, and um, so yeah, so we went back, next food delivery. Um, we took time to go there early enough that we could take time to pray. They said, we want you to go to every room and just pray, anoint this place with oil and pray. And um, there was just darkness in that whole place. There was so much darkness in there. The one room went into was all painted black. And it was just like, it was just amazing. Anyhow, so we just like prayed through that place and had oil with us, just anointing the various doorposts. And, and uh, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure what's all going to happen with that. We went back uh, Wednesday this week and took more food. And we only got to see the one because the other two were like, not up yet there in the afternoon, they were just getting up, and, and so, um, so we again just prayed with her. But there's an open door here, their hands are like this, but they aren't sure what to do with it, because she said, we don't feel even worthy to be connected with a church, but yet we're so hungry for what you guys have, and how do we connect with that, so, but the, the take-home message is like, it's an open door for us, every two weeks we're going to get back there, we're requesting the same list of people for every two weeks, so we can build relationships with these people. Let the Lord take it from there.